In this series, we're going to talk about other useful knots for fly fishing. One of the most popular is the nail knot. The nail knot is very functional if you wear out the loop of your fly line or if you purchase a fly line that doesn't have a factory welded loop in it. To use this tie fast tool, you simply lie your leader in the gutter of the tool. Then we'll take and wrap four, maybe five loops around the tie fast tool. We don't want to use any more than four or five loops because too much mass on the end of a floating line will sink it. So that's uh, why four or five loops is about the perfect balance. Then we'll take and run the butt section back down the gutter, exiting the forward end of it. Then we'll take our fly line, insert that into the gutter of the tie fast tool, and we're ready to remove the tie fast tool and we're essentially done with it at this stage of the game. Now we'll carefully massage the loops down to the tip of the fly line and get the knot semi-tight, but not so tight that we can't move it right down to the tip. So when we tighten the knot, we're not getting rid of uh, too much of the fly line. As soon as we get to that point in time, we can seat it a little bit, and then we'll want to bring in a plier or something that'll give us some extra gription to pull the knot completely tight. We'll come back in, drag the trim the tag off the butt, and trim the nub of fly line that's left. And there you have it. Very fast, quick, easy way to tie a nail knot on the end of your fly line. A nail knot tied with the tie fast tool. A nail knot is a knot that you use to attach generally a leader to a fly line or the back into a fly line. It's again a little bit more complicated. Uh, there are a lot of tools out there on the market and you can utilize tools and tools certainly make it easier and quicker. But sometimes you're out in the water and something happens and you don't have a tool. So I'm just going to run over the basic nail knot, how to tie it without a tool. First thing I like to do is have a bit of nylon. I'm going to use this 50 pound slick shooter just because it's going to be visible for you. Uh, so, so I chop off a foot of that. You can equally use a bit of 20 pound regular nylon, which I'm not going to use because of the visibility. Or if the worst comes to the worst and you don't even have a bit of that, and you're just trying to attach a leader to your fly line, you just simply chop off about four inches of your leader butt section, and that is a nice thick piece. So basically, you're chopping yourself off a thick piece of tippet, of, of nylon. So how I like to do this knot is I like to hold about an inch of fly line, in my left hand, being a right-handed knot tire. And I like to take a bit of this red stuff here, probably about eight inches, pointing to the left-hand side, and just pinch it at that one-inch point here. I then take the yellow and kind of nippily and dexterously fold it in half like that and make a little loop in this bright yellow stuff. And then I lay that loop on top of this. So I've got a kind of a four-meat sandwich. You've got the fly line here, the leader here and then the two parts of the loop. And one word of warning is try and not make try and make sure your loop isn't longer than the fly line because that can cause a bit of a problem later on. So I, I do like to make this loop a bit shorter than where the end of the fly line is. So that's my setup. Now what I like to do is kind of readjust my grip. So I'm going to pinch all this with my right hand and bring my left hand in over from the top but leaving behind the red. Pinch the red like this here now. Okay, so now all you do is you take this red stuff and you wind it around the fly line. One turn, pinch it with your left thumb and index finger. Second turn, tight, nice tight pinch. And a third turn, tight and pinch. And a fourth turn, I kind of generally like four or five turns in most of these knots that I tie. And then you just pinch that whole column of four turns on the, in your left hand here and thread the red through this stiff section here. Now watch carefully because sometimes you might let go and it might sp spring out. So just kind of watch that as you go through this next process. That does not want to pull out of this yellow loop. You see it's trying to go there. Then I kind of go through this gap in my hand, grab the yellow bits, both of them, and start to pull. And you can kind of see if we just manipulate that and twist that around what I'm doing. I'm pulling that red tag through 
underneath the coils and out the other side like that. Then you just tighten slowly. You can see that loop coil disappearing. And then you grab this little tag and again, you don't want to let this go because what happens if you let go, the whole thing springs into a horrible mess of untidiness. Tighten that. Tighten that, kind of get it finger tight and carefully take a peek at your knot. There we go, that's not too bad. And then with my nails, what I like to do is I just push the coils together. Don't like any gaps in my nail knots. And then once I've got the gaps together, I just simply tighten everything. Pull the fly line and the tag in, pull the nail knot end. And that is a quick, simple way of tying a nail knot without a torque. The arbor knot is a knot used right at the beginning of setting everything up. It's how you attach your back in to your reel. So I've taken the spool out here. Easy to do with an open frame reel like this. You take the spool out. Some reels have a closed frame in here and you don't want to take the spool out because when you put it in, you crush the backing. So make sure that your reel, if it is an open frame reel, you separate it like that. And this is a really easy knot. What I tend to do right at the beginning, I tie a little overhand knot here, kind of a jam knot. And I just pull that in and tighten that up. Snip off the tag of that. And then, this is a left-hand wind reel. So that means when I wind it, I'm going to wind it this way. What that means is that I put my line on backwards. If I go this way, that is the way it's going to wind. So to get a little drag, I go that way. And you'll see why in a second. So make sure you find out which way it's going to wind and you put the, the backing on backwards if you like. And I lay that down and it's a quite a simple matter of just doing an overhand knot around this main piece of backing. And you just tighten that overhand knot. And then that jam knot, you can see why you have the jam knot because you pull and the knot slides and the jam you tied at the beginning jams up there. And it's a slip knot, so when you tie, it goes on like this. And the reason you kind of put it on this way is that when you wind the line in, if I put this reel together, you'll see. And then start winding. And the reason we put the backing on backwards is that what you'll notice is that when you start to wind the reel, you can see how this is starting to wind. See the backing is being sucked up, so it's got a little tension. So I can wind backing in to start. If you were to set it up as a right-hand wind reel, or it's a left-hand wind reel, but you do it the other way around on the backing, when you wind, you will find that it slips inside itself. When I try to wind it in, you see what's happening. The spool is slipping inside that coil of backing. It's hard to start it off. Now, some people put a drop of super glue on, and then it doesn't matter which way you do it. You put a little tiny drop of super glue, and that holds you back into your your spool, but you know, it's an expensive reel. You might not want a bit of super glue in there when you take your backing off and change it later on. So that little tip of putting on the backing backwards to start off with is a good way of starting off and getting that friction enough to wind your backing on to start with. So that is a simple way of attaching your backing to your reel called the Arbor Knot. The Albright is a knot used to join leader to fly line or backing to fly line or it's also a great knot for joining very thick nylon to medium or thinner diameter nylons. So it's an easy knot to tie and uh, it goes something like this. I take my fly line in my left hand and I just fold a little loop into it about an inch double back on itself and close that loop fairly tight. Take the butt section of your leader and thread it through that loop up, I like to go up, just kind of works that way, and about six inches poking through and then pinch it with your left thumb and index finger. You then take the tag end back and you are going to rotate and bind and tighten these two halves of the loop together with five or six turns. So one, two, three, four, and then one more, 
And then you kind of think that this way came up from the bottom up. You thread your tag end through that same loop down, tighten the tag end up, tighten the standing end here, and you'll find if in your fingers you'll feel this thing tighten and slip, kind of don't let go. And then you just kind of keep some tension on it. You can see it looks like a higgledy piggledy mess. As you pull various pieces of it tight, you will start to get this thing adjusted. And you use your nails to get these things to close together. So there's a bit of fly line in there, so I just push that in with a nail, push these two together. And then when it's at a point where you're comfortable and happy with the neatness of it, one of the keys is to hold the two bits of your fly line and then tighten against it the two leader bits separately. So I'm going to pull that bit tight, and then it's a little bit short to grab, a little longer tag will be helpful, or you can get a bit of forceps or something, and you pull that tight, pull your fly line tight against the two, and then you just pull everything tight. And that is, obviously when you chop the ends off, a quick, not as neat as a nail knot because the fly line's double back on itself so it's bulky, but it's a quick, useful alternative and a strong way of adjoining a leader to your fly line if you don't have any tools or you just want to do it quickly. So that is the Albright knot. The following knot was tied in a sample of Rio's 10-pound steelhead salmon tippet material and tested on our Instron machine to illustrate its relative breaking strength. Let me show you the wind knot. Not that you really want to know the wind knot, but I'm going to show you something. So the wind knot is just a knot usually caused by bad casting. It ends up in your leader. It's kind of like an overhand knot, really, that just through the course of fishing it and casting, the knot tightens in your leader. That's what it is. That's what it looks like in this 50-pound stuff. I'm going to show you it in this 10-pound steelhead tippet material. Uh, again, no reason to learn this thing because it's not a good knot to have, but if you get a wind knot and it's loose, you want to undo it in your leader or cut it off and replace it because the reason I put this in this 10 pound tippet material is we're going to put this on the Instrom machine and break it and see how it affects the strength of the leader. In this single knot test, the overhand knot or wind knot broke at 5.87 pounds, which equates to 55% of the tensile strength. Rio, make the connection.